Now this document here was produced by OCR, the exam board, and it's mainly focused on Physics A, but this doesn't have to be just for Physics, it can be for any course that you're doing at A level, and it doesn't have to be OCR. I think a lot of the kind of uh, hints and tips and kind of things that they've, uh, they, they kind of suggest here can be applied to every single exam board, so AQA, Edexcel, and so on. And really, this document came about, and it's, uh, it's a two-sided thing, um, it came about from advice that uh, has basically been written by the, the exam boards based on how students did in their exams last year. It talks about the common mistakes that students made, and this thing here has got advice both for general exam technique and what you need to do to make sure that your answers are clear and legible and they're going to be awarded the, the, the marks necessary. And also it talks about some of the common physics uh, mistakes that people make. So, this document, where can you find it? Well, uh, apart from the fact you can see it now, um, I can't actually publish the link to it. OCR, they've put it in their secure area, which means that you need to be a teacher to log in to actually access this document. Um, and that's something which I know is a bit of a pain, and I think it's something that will change in the future. So at the moment I can't give you the direct link to this, but hopefully by watching the video uh, I'll be talking through some of the main things. Now in this first video I'm going to talk about uh, the key bits of exam technique that can be applied to every single paper across every single subject. So these are the things to allow you to get the most marks on every single paper. And then the second video, which I'll put a link to up here, talks about the common physics mistakes that people have made. So let's get started. So some of my favourite things in this document include the fact that um, if you make a mistake, make sure you actually clearly cross through the incorrect answer and then write the answer very clearly. Too many times people kind of leave the correct answer, but they don't put it often, uh, I think in exams you get like a little uh, space to put your answer. Make sure you actually write it there so it's very clear for anybody reading your, your work to see what your final answer is. If you made a mistake, just cross through it neatly. There's nothing wrong with that. However, this one was news to me. Even if you make a mistake and you cross it out, provided your work was correct, you might still be awarded marks for it. Now, this is what OCR say. Now, that doesn't mean that you just have to kind of, uh, you know, start crossing everything out, but it does actually mean that sometimes, provided you're not contradicting yourself somewhere else, even if you think it's wrong and you've crossed it out, you might still gain credit for it, which is a little bit of a bonus. Now, the next thing is something that uh, I think is really, really important, OK? Um, do not write too much. And although you do have additional answer pages and, you know, you can keep writing and writing and writing, sometimes the best responses are the shortest ones. Make sure that things are concise. Uh, make sure that you've got your clear points, uh, all the points kind of clearly laid out with key words in there. And if you do that, actually that's sometimes easier for somebody marking your paper. If you've written a whole two-sided essay with an answer to a six-mark question, you might have been writing too much. It's fragmenting the response and then it's harder to mark. So make sure as much as you can that you do answer your things concisely. Now this next one comes up all the time. As you do uh, multiple step calculations, it is really key that you keep your um, unrounded figure in your calculator or at least you write it down. If you round down too early, it means that you then have an error in your final answer. So for example, if you're working to three significant figures, an intermediate number, you'd write it down off your calculator, you know, write down the full calculator display or save it in the memory. Use that then later on to work out your final value. And if you do this, it means that you don't round down too early, and that means that your final answer is correct. And this one here, you should have got into good habits at GCSE. Show every step in your calculation. And that means that even if your final answer might be incorrect, you can still get maybe two or three or four marks even, even if you make that mistake at the end. You know, we all make mistakes, there's nothing wrong with that. But what we want to see is a clear, logical progress through each question. And in terms of significant figures, um, make sure that uh, you, you do use the appropriate number of significant figures. And this is the same as the least accurate data provided in the question. So for example, um, if you have something to three and something to four, your final answer should be given to the least amount, which is three significant figures. And just a little bit of advice from the people who write your exams, circle or underline or even highlight the key bits of data in especially multiple choice questions. And if you want to, write down key ideas and equations alongside that. And another thing you need to do is when you're actually um, working through your multiple choice questions, is if you know that an answer is incorrect, get rid of it. You know, basically write on stuff, you know, put a cross at the side to basically eliminate the wrong answers. And that then gives you a better chance of finding the right answer. So you can show your working out, you can put ideas down to the side, as long as you clearly identify at the end of it which is your correct answer.
And finally, the last bit of general advice is to think about is your answer actually appropriate? Have you worked out something that does sound plausible? So if you're maybe measuring the mass of something, is it at roughly the right value? Or have you maybe multiplied something by a power of 10 or a power of 100? So this is just a last check. You know, often people, they get the right answer, like the numerical number, but then they've got it out by a factor of 1,000 or 10,000 or something. So just have a think. Does your answer sound reasonable? And the way to get better at that, about understanding what is a reasonable answer, is just by doing more and more practice questions. So those are uh, some of the kind of the key tips. You know, nothing there which is particularly uh, groundbreaking, but these are the mistakes that people make. If you get into good habits now, it means when it comes to your real exams where everything's stressful and you're under a real time limit, you're going to be a lot better at just making sure you don't make these silly mistakes. So why not have a look now at my other video. I've got a link to it at the end of this with some of the key mistakes in physics that people made last year.